this is a B1 PGD or to give it its full name pre-implantation genetic diagnosis which is rather a mouthful but we'll see that actually it's not too much stuff um, to remember when we get to it. A PGD is a technique for testing embryos before they're actually placed into the mother. So this part here, implantation, what would normally happen with a baby is, if we just draw for a second, here's a uterus, I'm going to draw the whole thing, so these would be um, where the ovaries would be. What happens when an egg is released, it gets fertilised up here in the oviduct or egg tube or fallopian tube in the old word. It will then roll down into the uterus and it sinks in to the lining of the uterus. So this bit here would all be uh, nice spongy tissue and the egg sinks down and that's where it starts to develop and this is called implantation now egg cells don't always do this some egg cells um, and some people estimate it's maybe somewhere between 25 and 50 percent of them actually don't implant at all they would just continue uh, and be lost from the mother's body and so the, the baby would never develop but if it's going to develop it has to implant it has to go in sink into the uh, the lining of the womb so what we're going to do in this technique is to test um, that embryo, that ball of cells for any genetic conditions before it gets a chance to implant. Now the way it works is there's several steps to it. The first step is that the mother would be given a fertility drug. Now normally we would expect only one egg to be released once a month by the mother. So one month, one ovary would release an egg, the next month, the other ovary would release the egg, and so on. Occasionally, of course, more than one egg is released in the case of um, non-identical twins. What we want to do here is to get quite a few eggs released, because we want to fertilise them all. We want to give ourselves the best chance of getting um, a fertilised egg without a particular genetic condition. So by giving her a fertility drug, she may release six, seven, eight eggs at once. The eggs are collected in a simple operation. Then using the father's sperm, it would be put into, it's not a good one is it? Um, not to scale, the, the egg is much bigger than this, much bigger than the sperm, but just so you can see it. The sperm and egg are fertilised in, we would say a test tube, this is what we call test tube babies if you like. It's actually better called IVF in vitro fertilization meaning in glass um, so the sperm and egg are artificially brought together we maybe then have let's have six egg cells that have been produced two of these fertilized egg cells two of these zygotes um, you'll notice that they have um, a different coloured nucleus. I'll come to that in a second. So all of these eggs will then be allowed to grow up to the eight cell stage. There's our eight cell stage embryo. We remove one of those cells, and this doesn't harm the embryo at all. It's a completely harmless operation, it doesn't have any sort of side effects. We can test that removed cell to see if there are any um, genetic abnormalities. So if we test that cell and we find there is an abnormality, so for example in um, this embryo when it developed, and this is why I've coloured it in a different colour, perhaps this is one that is faulty. So we could then say, oh, right, we know that that embryo is carrying a genetic condition and so we won't implant that one and we won't implant that one. The choice then has to be made um, to select certain embryos that we know are healthy. Generally speaking, IVF is, is actually quite expensive. It maybe costs six, seven thousand um, pounds. You can have it done for free on the NHS, but I believe you only get one chance to do it. After that, or if you want further treatment, um, you would pay for it. And so because it's so expensive and it doesn't always work, it's not 100% sure, what they do to improve their chances is they might 
um, put in two or maybe three embryos. There's an ethical question here because these embryos, although they're healthy, are not implanted. They're not put back into the mother. The mother doesn't want to be caring for um, potential babies. So the ethical question is, if these babies are destroyed, would we consider that the same as, uh, for example, a termination? Some people would agree. Some people would say, uh, no, I disagree. It's, it's not actually a human being yet. Whereas other people, of course, would say, this is a, a, a human being from the moment of conception. Um, one of the possible, it's not a way around it, but one thing that these are sometimes used for is a source of embryonic stem cells for research. Um, people would say, well, these cells are going to get destroyed anyway. Let's let them grow to the eight cell stage. We can at least do some useful research on them. But a controversial area. Um, there are some ethical problems with it, certainly. Once you've selected your healthy embryos, your balls of cells, they're then placed into the mother with the hope that they will implant and the baby will then um, continue to grow, the embryo will grow in the mother. So PGD involves um, a little bit of IVF, test tube babies, but the key point is that we test those embryos before they're allowed to implant. That way we can select, do healthy embryo selection. It's not something everyone would agree with. Um, it's not something that is cheap at the moment, although it's getting more efficient. But in the case of people who know that they are carriers of um, severe genetic conditions, this might be a choice that they make. Some people would decide that um, it would be morally acceptable to allow a ball of cells to be destroyed or to seminate a ball of cells, whereas they wouldn't worry so much if um, so they wouldn't worry about that so much. Whereas if it was a baby that had perhaps been developing for um, a few months and it was then tested and found out they had that condition, they would find that decision much harder to make. And so that's why um, some couples would go for PGD.